Dudes here with Sawhorse. I've got Chris with LG Squared. We're at the 1920s Makeover ATL, and we're going to talk about some of the control layers that we have here. Just put a review out on Rockwell, some of the other control layers that we've installed, and you guys had some comments and some questions. So I was going to ask Chris, who designed this jail cell. I mean, it looks like we're on the outside of the jail looking in, so, so we're good here. So one of the questions that we got is so we've got the control layers here. We've got the wall insulation installed mm -hmm. and we showed you a really cool model of the outriggers coming out yeah. and one of the questions i got is like why do we need outriggers well first of all what are outriggers because yeah. it sounds kind of weird yeah sounds like a band or something like that and like what like why do we why do we need them and what is what purpose do they serve yeah i mean typical construction is going to be you know our rafter the rafter the structure roof structure whether it's uh, rafters or trusses with uh, extended top cord, those typically go penetrate through the, the sheathing and that creates an overhang and the overhang is there to protect everything below it, the siding, the windows, give it a added protection. And, you know, we know that the overhang is going to protect primarily the upper half of the wall because you've got, you yeah. know, like you can't, unless you go really deep, you're going to the lower half of the wall. So overhangs can are especially in a in a construction like this where we have really deep reveals for our windows yeah. they're they're a you know they're more aesthetic at this point they're they're also a little belt and suspenders for protecting the wall so to because this is a historic renovation remodel we're trying to bring you know respect yeah. respect the history here we want to bring those overhangs back make it look like bring it back to the original and so to create overhangs, instead of letting the, the structure penetrate the, the sheathing and just have it be part of the roof structure, we, and the reason we're doing it, we don't want the penetrations because it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a penetration that can, where yeah. air sealing, can, air, air leakage can happen, and you have all that, all that detailing. So in order to create the overhangs, we're building them to the outside of the structure. So we're allowing you to create a shell in a more simple way to where that transition from roof to wall is just straightforward. It's sheathing coming down to the wall, sheathing going down the wall, and there's it's very clean intersection. No penetrations coming through, which are thermal bridges, air leakage, you know, interruptions in the in the insulation, that sort of thing. So if we if we put them on top of the roof structure, then we can encapsulate them in insulation, let the insulation carry out with the overhangs or with the with these outriggers and it creates an overhang and it looks exactly the same as if you had, had it buried within the structure. You bring up a good point. So it's really that it sounds like the air control layer. We have more control over that because this Monopoly house, we shot yep. some pictures of that. We did the testing, the, the sheathing went up, but typically the rafters come down. You've got the, the ceiling joist that it usually nails onto the ceiling yeah. joist and the sheathing's right below that because yeah. you might have some blocking in there. Yeah. yeah. But that's where a lot of the air is going to leak. It's a tricky the spot. The blocking in the bands. It's a tricky spot to get the air sealing right. And a lot of the, the default is let's just put some foam around it. Well, foam is never going to be 100%. What, spray foam? Yeah, spray yeah. foam or any kind, yeah, any kind of either minimally expansive or expansive foam around any of these joints. That's sort of the go to. And it's, it's a, an issue that when the building moves, the, that foam starts to delaminate, you know, it starts to delaminate from those joints or it's, it's done in a sort of maybe a lazy way. And so it didn't get quite all that, that that's just a, it's a very difficult and sealant, same thing. That stuff's going to dry and potentially, uh, and so there, these are ways to try to eliminate those problem areas, you know, to, 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 to create some simpler way to get us our air barrier without having to, you know, and, and and create the overhangs. So so why not so why not go with the traditional framing, and wrap the whole thing with plywood, air seal that, and then basically add insulation on top of that. Was you mean a, a, a wrap? Yeah. Or, so so you got like a twenty four inch overhang, a this thick. <laughs> um, it's ugly, right? Well, is, is that why you, you we know, don't do less it? Practical. <laughs> so so really, what we're doing is creating the insulation, yeah. structural insulation, because we're adding yeah. the ribbing to it. That's right. And it has the same traditional thickness of a regular overhang. That's that right. way, when someone looks at it from the outside, they're not going to know the, same, yeah. the mass is mostly insulation. That's right. You have a lot more control over it. We're going, and the, the, the outriggers, um, just in, if anybody's going to ask this probably, is you know how, what's, how, how big do these outriggers? They don't need to go all the way to the roof. 
So if you have a 12 inch overhang, you need a three foot outrigger. Two foot goes on the roof, a foot goes out uh, at cantilevers. And the same, it's one third, two third is the general rule for cantilevers. So that's all, it's as far back as you need to go. And then all of that will be basically, we, we're gonna rip these yep. two by sixes to five inches. We have two layers of five inch. And so we're gonna rip the two by six to five inches deep. And then our insulation is flush. Insulation carries out, meets the end of the rafter tail. And the reason we're doing that is because what are you gonna do with that space otherwise? And also with insulation inside the cavity, the way it is, and on, on top of it, we're keeping that those those outriggers at the same temperature as what they are uh, you know in inboard of the exterior wall so there's no difference the expansion and contraction happens at the same rate of the entire outrigger so that out here it's protected just as much as it is inside the inboard of the exterior wall yeah and getting the roof done correctly is one thing getting the walls done correctly is another thing underneath the foundation because there's continuity all the way around yeah I think the challenge with most of these builds and any part of construction are transitions. Yeah. If you're dealing with tiles, like how does the tile transition to drywall? Same thing with insulation. How does the insulation transition to the framing with the window and how do yeah. we wrap around it? So this is just one of those transitional details That's where right. you can maintain the integrity of the insulation, but also looks pretty. Yeah. Yeah, this idea of this, the term monopoly framing is, you know, it's it's come, it makes sense because you're built, you're, the idea is that Monopoly House doesn't have an overhang, right? Yep. That's what that's kind of what it what it looks like, and so the idea there is that that's at the framing stage, and then when you go to put on the overhangs or the insulation or things like that, that's where that that shape changes. And ideally, which we've done several houses this way, um, whether they're contemporary flat roof houses or they have slope contemporary sloped houses, or even sort of the mix of that contemporary farmhouse where it's yeah. like classical mixed with contemporary. You can do it without overhangs and some of the concern has been, well, what about our overhangs for windows, protecting our windows and things? Well, in this case, we have about 10 inches of an overhang over every single window closer to the window than if we than the overhang that would be two, three feet, sometimes a foot above it. So this is probably better protection for the window. Um, and so you know, it just has to do with design and, you know, I mean, every, that's where having an overhang at all on this house has to do it's entirely because of the architecture of, of the home the architecture. And, and to help with protect and, and protect the siding. Yeah, yeah. It does. protect, protect yeah. the siding and, you know, designing it a little bit of an overhang helps depending on the yeah. orientation of the sun, sure. some solar gain and doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. All that kind of stuff. Well, cool. Yeah.